Let's analyze what is the issue with this battery pack. This battery pack was removed from an electric scooter. Um, the owner of the scooter he was complaining that he would charge the battery pack. It would very quickly show that it was fully charged. The charger would show a green light indicating that it's not providing current to the battery pack anymore. Uh, he would uh, install the battery pack on his scooter. The scooter would indicate an almost full charge, but uh, then he tries to start using the scooter, but very quickly the scooter dies and uh, cannot extract any more power from the battery. And uh, curiously, the battery pack, uh, the, the scooter would still indicate that there is a good amount of charge on the battery pack, but the battery pack wasn't able to provide this power to the scooter. So. Let's analyze what's happening here. Uh, this is a battery pack with a 10 cells in series, 3 in parallel, for a total of 30 cells, so it's a 10S3P pack. You see that there's a BMS here on the top of the pack. And uh, from the bottom you see that you have these 3 cells which are arranged in in parallel and uh, those other three which are arranged in other parallel and they are in series with each other and then the same thing here these three are in parallel these other three are also in parallel and they are in series with each other you have you see that in the center there's a tab that allows us to do the reading for the voltage those tabs are also present on the top as you see here between those three cells uh, once again between those three cells here so I'm going to be measuring the voltage uh, on this entire battery pack from those tabs and from the contacts on the bottom and then we're going to quickly identify what is the issue with this battery pack. So let's start from the left, shall we? So we're going to start from this tab here. Here we see 3.9 volts almost, so these are very healthy cells. Now we try to measure from here to here. We see 3.7, that's still reasonably charged. Now we try to measure from here to here. And make a proper contact with this tab. 3.6 that's still reasonably charged. Let's measure with the next group of cells here, from here to here. And we already identified the problem here. This string of uh, batteries is at 3.3 volts. And that's considerably lower than the 3.9 that we read in the beginning of the pack. So from this reading here, we can already tell that somewhere within those three cells here, one of them, at least one of them, is defective, and it's draining this uh, string. It's uh, pulling the also charge from the other cells as it's uh, discharging. This is dangerous because as this battery discharge, as this uh, cell discharges, it's also going to discharge its neighbors, and then it's going to kill the entire string of cells if we don't identify and remove the defective cell. Uh, before this pack reaches 3 volts. So this one is 3.3, it can still be saved. Let's check if there's any other string of batteries here which is defective. 3.7, it's healthy. We flip the battery to continue. So we go from here to here. See 3.7, that's also healthy. Now we measure from here to here. 3.6, that's also reasonably healthy. And let's measure from here to here. Here we find 3 volts. And that's the lowest voltage that we found so far. So from this we can also say that uh, we can identify that somewhere among these 3 batteries, at least one of them, is also defective. At least one of them has a very low internal resistance, it's dying and it's uh, draining its neighbors in the process. So 
soon this is going to kill its neighbor because we cannot let the voltage go very much below 3 volts without incurring impermanent damage to the cell um, so let's keep measuring the other strings here this one was at uh, 3 volts the next one is at 3.5 3.6 yeah that's a still reasonable and uh, let's measure this against the last string which is 3.6 3.7 almost okay so all right so we have already identified what is the issue with this uh, battery pack we identified that there's two strings of cells that are uh, they have at least one defective cell um, among them and they need to be repaired those cells need to be removed and they need to be uh, replaced by a healthy cell so what happens uh, this explains the behavior that the user of the the, the scooter has explained to us that uh, it would indicate that the battery pack is charged very fast what does that mean it means that uh, once the we, we start charging the battery pack and we have those cells here which were holding 3.9 volts and you start supplying a current to the battery to charge them these ones are going to reach 4.2 volts very quickly even though the other ones didn't reach 4.2 yet then they they still want to have a current the charger what the charger sees is that the total voltage of the pack is still very low so it's still going to keep supplying current it will still try to equalize the entire battery to reach 4.9 volts even though, though these three here have already reached 4.2 but the BMS is going to see that the voltage in this uh, cells is going to be very high so it's going to cut the charging and that's the reason why the charger is going to indicate as if the charging is over so the, it is a BMS which is protecting the battery and then the, it, it looks like the pack is already charged but it's not it's just the BMS entered in a protection mode to protect those uh, batteries which are already fully charged but the problem is those other batteries they're still not charged and what happens when you try to put this into the scooter is that it's going to show that the pack is already half charged let's say it's at 80 percent charge because most of the batteries are going to be near 80 percent charge this string here is going to be at 100 percent charge but we know that this one or was it this one which had the lowest voltage this is actually going to be a 20% charge or 30% charge so it's going to be uh, this is what's going to limit the performance of the battery pack because once you start using the scooter and you start draining battery uh, the power from all the batteries these ones are going to be depleted very fast and once they reach uh, 3 volts the BMS is going to detect that those batteries are already fully discharged and it's going to go into protection mode and it's going to disable the battery and that's the reason why the scooter would suddenly die even though we see that the overall voltage of the of the pack indicates that there's still a lot of charge to be drawn from the pack um, this is dangerous because if the BMS doesn't fulfill its its purpose for any reason the BMS is not uh, actuating to protect those batteries during the charging that means that those batteries which are already fully charged which means those are the healthiest batteries on the pack uh, as the other cells would continue charging those which are fully charged they would overcharge and that's when they are going to catch fire that's when they're going to burst and explode so the defective cells they are going to represent a risk to the healthiest cells on the pack when you're trying to recharge the entire pack and uh, the larger the pack you have the more likely the more statistically likely you are to find at least one of the batteries one of the cells is going to start giving you problems prematurely that's another reason why when building a battery pack the larger the battery pack is the more important it is that you're building them with uh, identical batteries so they must have the same age they must have the same number of cycles in the sense that uh, you're ensuring that all of them have a similar uh, voltage the similar capacity and they're going to age together so there will be not a single battery to take out the entire pack as we see here it still happens that as they're aging one of them is definitely be the unlucky one it's going to age faster and because of that we're going to have the performance of the entire pack compromised 
uh, still from those 30 batteries most likely I, I would guess that uh, we only have two cells which might need to be substituted one in this string and the other one in the string here and uh, the other 28 cells um, as they show here they seem they still seem to be holding a decent voltage we saw they are ranging from 3.6 to 3.9 and uh, that shouldn't be a problem as long as we are cycling the spec uh, frequently, as long as we're charging it frequently, it wouldn't be a problem for the BMS to charge the spec because they would still have very similar voltages. Um, this also drives home the importance of having balancing on the batteries when you're trying to build a battery and you need to choose a BMS, you should always choose a BMS with the balancing. In this case here, we see that uh, even if this bed, uh, BMS had uh, passive balancing, there wouldn't be enough to protect this battery because there is a very large difference in the voltage from the cells. So the passive balancing is not able to balance cells when there is such a large difference in voltage between the cells. The passive balancing it only works if the cells are very close in voltage. And then we'll be able to do the balancing because the, the passive balancing can only deal with the current of 20 milliamperes, which is a very low current. When you have such a big difference in the voltage, your only option is to, um, to use an active balancing so that all the, char all the cells are going to achieve the same voltage before you start charging. So you should always, when you have a pack which is in this situation where the cells are very unbalanced, where because you left it in storage for a very long time, you didn't recharge it for a very long time, you always need to balance the pack first, and then you can fully charge it to its nominal voltage. Then the BMS is going to be able to, to help keeping this pack healthy if this BMS has the passive balancing. But in cases where we see that the, the pack is already unbalanced, you should not charge this pack you should not use the spec. The first thing you need to do is to balance the pack first and then you can fully charge it and then you can use it. The best uh, case you could do with this spec, um, if you really need to use it and you don't have the tools or you don't have the time to replace the defective cells, what you can do is that you get the crocodile clips and then you clip them on the terminals of the string which has a lower voltage and then you connect only that string to an external charger and then you're going to charge that string um, until it reaches full voltage and that's, you need to do this with all the strings of batteries in the entire pack so you're individually charging each of them until all of them reach 4.2 volts after you do that you can connect the entire battery pack to the charger you leave it there to make sure that uh, all the batteries have the same you leave it charging a bit longer, so just make sure that all of them are, have the same voltage. After that, you can use the pack again, but uh, if you already know that there's a string of cells which is discharging faster, then you cannot leave this battery in storage for very long. Uh, you need to be constantly cycling this battery, you need to be constantly topping up the charge in this battery in a way that you prevent it from, you prevent that the voltage in some cells is going to fall uh, very much um, out of spec with the other ones. You should ensure that uh, the voltage is never allowed to drift apart from the other cells.